Alright, so we are back with Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 6, Episode 4. Um, out with the old, or in with the new. I don't know. But anyway, we start off where we left off last week with Jessica and Tommy's um, double date. And Jock is really feeling himself thinking that, you know, Shamir, you gotta be quiet. He thinking that, you know, Tommy really liked him and he always liked Tommy and he never really went went for Tommy because that was Scrap's girl, but not a Scrappy lock. Scrap is locked up and out of the picture, he's in with Tommy. But in my head, I'm like, you realize that you just she's just doing this to get back at Carly. And Jessica called that out. Because, you know, Jessica's friends with Carly. Jessica and Carly have been friends for a couple of seasons now. Shh. But anyway, they was, the date was stupid. They was just eating some meatballs, cooking spaghetti, whatever, blah, blah, Then we get introduced to a new cast member, Sierra. And I ought to say, on Love & Hip Hop Atlanta, I always like Love & Hip Hop Atlanta the most out of all seasons. But I don't really like when they bring new people. I like their normal cast. I like Stevie, Jocelyn, Mimi, Rashida, um, even Erica when she was on there. But, um... Yeah, even though I don't like some of these cast members, I like them on the show. Like, I like them. But they always bring in new people, and I'm already not feeling Sierra. Like, I, I don't even feel Jessica or Tommy. I don't, those are new cast members in my book. I don't like none of them. Um, they had that one girl on this season. The girl, I don't know if y'all remember her, but she, she used to always say popcorn. Pop, like, she used to always say her husband had popcorn girls or whatever. Uh, she was from seasons ago, if y'all remember her. If y'all remember her name, put it in the comments. But Anyway, we get introduced to Sierra. She's feeling herself saying she always wanted to own her own shop when she was younger. She used to be doing um, nails or hair or whatever since she was in high school or middle school or something like that. And now she owns her own shop called The Glam Shop. Um, she Oh, she used to do makeup in the back of a club, a strip club. When she was a little bit younger, but now she got her own business. She feeling herself. She like it, which I can respect, you know, came from the bottom. And now you did it. Go. Go pee. But now she um she own her own shop. And she say she got 13 people. Hold on. Here. Come on, man. Here, go. Hurry up. My bad, y'all. I had to get that baby out of here. But anyway, um, she got 13 people who work under her. She made sure she said that part. And she got an assistant who is also her marketing director, Mariah, Moriah, who's been her friend for forever. I don't like that name, Mariah. It's just Moriah. It's like, it's like a fake or a bootleg Mariah, but it's Moriah, whatever. I don't like it. But Mariah or Moriah is actually really, really cute. Probably one of the best looking girls on this whole season now. Um, Mariah been Sierra's friend for a long time. She actually used to do, Sierra used to do Mariah's hair in high school. And now she's working for her. At first, Mariah, uh, Sierra wasn't going to hire Mariah, but her husband convinced her to hire her. And now she's a marketing director. And since she does that, she tries to get business. Her job is to get business into the glam shop, which she did by convincing Sierra to hire lovely Mimi. Which is a girl. They always mention that she got over a million Instagram followers. Like, who cares? Don't nobody really care about that. But anyway, um, actually, we don't get introduced to Lovely Mimi yet, so I'm not going to talk about her. My, what I think of her. But, basically, Sierra don't like Mari uh, Lovely Mimi. Mariah, Moriah is trying to tell, convince Sierra that Mimi is good for the shop, which she probably is. Um, Sierra don't like that Mimi is loud and ghetto and ratchet and all that stuff. And I don't like this relationship between Sierra and Mariah. Because Sierra act like she is Mariah's mom or boss. Well, she is her boss. But she, I don't really like Sierra at all. I like Mar Mariah a little bit. And then she's all like, you need to pick sides. You either team Mimi or team Sierra. And you be acting like you team Mimi. Why you always got to defend her? If you go defend her, at least don't do it in front of her. Wait till she gone. Which was stupid. But anyway, Mar Mariah says she teamed both of them. And Sierra, like, no, you gotta pick sides. But whatever. Pretty, like, I don't, like I said, I don't like new cast members, but they was alright for what they was. 
Then we see Jasmine's scene. She is moving. Um, apparently, Kirk, she hasn't seen Kirk since the incident where she spilled the beans about her having a baby. And now she has to move out the apartment. Scripted scene number one on this episode. All of a sudden, you're moving out. You mean to tell me you didn't have no other income? And I thought you lived with with Rod and whatever, Kiana. Kiana. What happened to that? So, script to scene number one. She says since, she says somebody don't want to hear what she got to say, but she knows somebody that do. And I'm like, okay, Carly Red. Everybody, I'm pretty sure everybody knew she was about to call Carly Red in, which she did. Carly Red came in and she started telling Carly more about the situation, I guess. And ja Carly said when she got a call from Jasmine, she was like, wow, we not friends, blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to go because I want to see this baby. I'm like, Carly Red is so nosy, but I, I like her. I like Carly Red. I really do. Anyway, and that's another one, Benzino. I wish he never got fired. I wish he was still a part of this show. Like, I like the, the core of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. But anyway, Carly Red is taking off. She wants to see the baby. She... Mentioned where's the baby cannon as soon as she got there and Jasmine like he's out right now Which I was like that's weird. It's a little baby. He out. Where's he at? But he was with Kiana who is um, Jasmine's girlfriend they started talking blah 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 nothing nothing really be oh Carly said this is the apartment that Kirk and Rashid used to live in so I'm kind of starting to believe you So I'm like dang this, she basically saying she haven't believed you all this time Are you still trying to be friends with her and stuff inviting her over what's going on? Anyway, then we see Kiana and baby Kiana walk in, and um, Carly, I, which I thought this was so weird, how Carly picked up the baby, and then said, I, can I get a picture? Like, that's just weird. Like, you should, and now, Jasmine did say, what are your motives, but that's, that's just all out weird. You're taking pictures of, well, for them, because they're not friends, and you just let her hold your baby and take pictures and all that. You knew what she was going to do with that, uh, so I didn't really like that. Anyway. Then we see, oh, and Carly said that the baby kind of looks like Kirby. That could have been for TV. I mean, who's to say? We, I still don't really know if that baby is Kirk's because they keep mentioning that Rod is a scam artist. So I'm, I'm not 100% sure until it comes out on this show. Anyway, then, um, oh, it has a dimple just like Kirk or whatever. And then we see Carly introduces herself to... Kiana, she says, so are you the nanny? Kiana says, no, I'm her girlfriend. And then Carly's like, huh, huh. She's going all off of this. She, Carly in her confessional says that they thoughts, but they cute thoughts, which is probably true, which is true, actually. <laughs> anyway, she said, don't tell me it's another baby. And then she says, no. She tells what was going on, and Kiana says, says that I was with Kirk, too. Carly's taking all this in, and... Yeah, that's a that's pretty much it for that scene. Um, then we go to Mama D. We see her meeting up at Bambi's house. She go to Bambi house. I don't, I don't care about Scrappy's Scrappy and Bambi storyline at all. So we go to this um, Bambi or Mama D is trying to convince Bambi to still marry Scrappy. Bambi's like Bambi's not here for it. She's like we having troubles right now. And her main problem is that Scrappy left. Bambi thinks that Scrappy should have stayed. If that's supposed to be her husband, her fiance, he should stay. He should not leave. He, she thinks that's a girl move or a punk move or whatever. So she don't like that. Mama D says, I agree with you there. He should be here. And that was pretty much it for that scene. Oh, well, Mama D says she wants to get them together. So she's going to try to get them together again. Um, then we, we get introduced to lovely Mimi. And I have to say, I like Love With Mimi. I really do. And at first, she reminded me... Of, she do... She is extra. And she reminded me of Cardi B, but a fake Cardi B. Like, I think Cardi B is actually like that. Lovely Mimi, I think she putting on... I really do. A little bit. Like, a little bit. She probably is like that, but not that far. Like, I don't know. But I like her. I really do. And she had her kids... <laughs> she Asian, she's like, um, yeah, I got me a fine black man, and we got kids that are all colors of the rainbow. I'm like, what in the world? Like, anyway, um, she has skies on, and she meets up with Tommy. Tommy is gonna be lovely Mimi's friend, and to be honest, I, I see these two going at it. I don't see Tommy being friends with no lovely Mimi. I see Tommy actually not liking lovely Mimi, but... 
Uh, we introduced to Tommy's kids too. She tells us about her kids and how the oldest one, I think she said the oldest one is more like her and the younger one is more laid back and cool. And that's the one that she took the skies on with lovely Mimi's kids. They jump in and, well, they, they all were jumping at one point, but then the parents, the two moms, went to the side and started talking. And, um, Tommy asks, like, so are you Asian? And I'm like, huh? <laughs> what else is she? What? Like, anyway, she says, yeah, I'm from Vietnam, something like that. And she started giving her, telling her about her background. And she says, I can do your nails for you. And she just says it in that accent. And as soon as she said that, I thought of, because I watch The Real, like, every day. And I thought of Jeannie Meyer and how she'd be making fun of her mama voice. Because they sounded just alike. So I'm like, do all Asian people talk in the same like, just like that, with that broken English, whatever. Um, Lovely Mimi says she liked to play up on stereotypes. So, uh, oh, and she said she knew she was going to like Tommy because they're just alike. Apparently, Lovely Mimi got in trouble when she was younger and was in juvie, and Tommy was too. Lovely Mimi got problems with her parents. Tommy does too. Lovely Mimi says she's back with her parents, though. She, well, her mom. They get along now. Tommy says, oh, well, we still don't. So they had a lot of stuff in common. Then Tommy started, oh, and Lovely Mimi said, I started liking you and I saw the mug shots. Because Lovely Mimi got some too. Then um, we go to, oh, Tommy started telling her about how she's trying to become friends with this girl, Waka Flocka's wife, um, Tammy. And she says, Tammy tried to bring her over to people that she don't even like. And Carly Rae, she told her about Carly Rae and how she slept with her her boyfriend or man whatever and they talk about young jock and how oh Mimi you're saying oh you the queen of petty that's petty blah 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 she liked that she diving and stuff like that and they say they need to hang out more um then we go to scrappy oh scrappy this scene, I actually like, I know I don't like Scrappy's storyline right now, but I like this scene. Because it kind of fooled me at first. I thought this was real, but then watching it back, it looks so fake. So it's Scrappy and this girl, Jasmine, who's from Star and some, she's from movies, a whole bunch of TV shows. Apparently Scrappy trying to get into acting now, which I, I'm, uh, to be honest, I cannot see him doing. I really can't. I like Scrappy, but I cannot see him being an actor. I really, I honestly just can't. And... It's just, I, he just don't, I can't say you don't look like an actor, because actors, I mean, anybody can be an actor based on looks, but he just don't come off as an actor to me, like, he just don't. Um, but anyway, the scene, they it was about to kiss, and then it was end scene, and, you know, they did that, that was scripted scene for the show, like, let's just do a fake kissing scene so we can put it in the trailer, and people think I'm cheating on Bam, you know. And Scrappy's like, nah, we ain't nothing like what you think with y'all ass ass. Nothing like that. So then, um, she, or he started telling her about his problems with Bambi. And she's like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Is the wedding still on? And he says, I don't know. Nothing really big with that. Then we go to Mimi and Tommy at the club. Lovely Mimi and Tommy go to the club. Um, Tommy, no, lovely Mimi brought... Uh, her 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 only friend from the shop, which is Moriah. Moriah brought a lot of her friends. One being Treasure P, this girl named Treasure P. And and since that happened, Tommy brought Jessica Dime. Jessica Dime. Oh, and I said, and Jessica Dime said, you know, we had our stomping grounds, the strip club, because Jessica Dime and Treasure P know each other. Another, not really a scripted scene, but I'm trying to figure out how, because. Um, Treasure P says she moved there from Texas. I thought Jessica Dime was a stripper in South Florida. Or maybe that was maybe that was Jocelyn that was a stripper. No, you know what? I thought Jessica Dime was a stripper inside Memphis. Cause didn't she know K Michelle? I don't know. It, I, I'm all mess. I don't really know what's for real. Anyway, um Treasure P had a little confrontation with Tommy because she said Tommy mentioned something about the clubs and uh, Treasure P said, oh, so you was a dancer too? And uh, Tommy was like, never that, no. She, I modeled and did all that at the club. And then she said, oh, well, you were a high, low and we were high. And Tommy's like, no. And that was throwing shade. I don't really like Treasure P at all. 
Um, and why are you going for Tommy of all people? And I don't understand how that make you low because you wasn't, I don't know. Somebody can leave a comment and tell me, explain to me what how that makes sense because I really don't know. Then we go to, um, somehow, I forget how it came about, but they talked about how Treasure P is messing with a married man. They don't like that. It's a confrontation between Jessica Dime, um, Lovely Mimi, and Jessica Dime, Lovely Mimi, and Tommy going at it with Treasure P because she's sleeping with a married man. Then Moriah jumps in and says, I am too, so I don't see what's, that, what's going on. And in my head, when I saw this scene, I'm like, please don't tell me they both sleeping with Kirk. But it came out, well, it technically didn't come out that they not, but whatever. Um, Lovely Mimi is actually married, so that's what sh her problem is with this. She's like, no, you shouldn't do that. Um, Jessica Dobb said, oh, they the mistress club. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Anyway, um, mm, Don says this is, oh, um, Jessica Don, Jessica Don was making light of this whole situation because in her confessional she was like, I'm not really, I just came here to have fun. I don't really come here for the drama and get all this tea. That's Carly's job. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious because Jessica Don and Carly are really good friends at this moment. Um, then we get a scripted scene, uh, another scripted scene from this episode. Uh, out of nowhere, it just so happened. Um, Jessica Dime decided to ask Tommy, so what's going on with you and Young Jock? Was that real or was that fake? You mean to tell me that while all of y'all are right here, you just decide to ask her about that? And it just so happened that Treasure P knows Young Jock and so does Mariah. So, you know, and I think it's pretty obvious that she don't like Young Jock. It was just, it was just the whole ploy to get back at Carly Red. Then, oh, and uh, Treasure P said that she thought Young Jock was still with somebody, Cena, something like that. I think it was Cena. I don't know if that was her name, but somebody. And Tommy really didn't care. And then Moriah called out Tommy and said, well, you're doing the same thing as us. You're doing the same thing to Carly. And then Jessica Dom jumped out of the fence like, they not married. They not married, which is true. I don't see... And Mariah need to sit down. I like her. She's so cute. But don't go at it with Tommy. You really going to get your face messed up going at it with Tommy. Anyway, then we go to a young job and Carly Red photo shoot for her book. And he is posing nude for the book, but he didn't apologize. Eventually, he did apologize. And he told Carly. Carly told him more stuff about Rashida and Kirk. And I'm just like, wow, like you are horrible. Why are you always talking about that girl? About this relate this whole situation, like you're not a good friend. You, but then you know, mm, I don't. Know. Well, Jock was there, so I guess never mind. Showed the picture, the dimple on the chin. Uh, Jock's like, mm, dimple on the chin, blah blah. Jock said that he slept with um, uh, what's her name? Jock slept with what's her name too? Whatever her name is, um, Jasmine, and. I think it was something about a threesome. I kept seeing it in a preview, but I didn't see it on the actual show if she slept with him, or if it was a threesome or not. But whatever. So they thinking that the baby could be Jocks. I think she made it clear that the baby is Kirk, so I don't know why they're even talking about this. Um, then we go to Mama D, who's taking Scrappy somewhere. He doesn't know where he's going. Um, and she opens the door, he goes in, she shuts the door. And he's in there, he sees his dad, his stepmom, and Bambi. I like how Scrappy was saying, my dad and my stepmom are both counselors, and my mom and my dad, my mom and my stepmom, my dad and my stepmom are both counselors, and my dad and my mom don't get along, but they got along just to put me here. So I like that, how the mom is trying to fix their relationship, so she reached out to the dad and the stepmom, I like that. And good old Mama D, she wasn't being all messy and stuff. She left. She didn't stay there. Because the old Mama D, the Mama D of old would have stayed in the counseling session with them. But she didn't. She left. I thought that was big of her. Like, I, I don't care about this. And I don't understand counseling because it didn't really seem like the counselors were giving much advice. It just seemed like Bam me and Scrappy was just going at it and going at it and going at it. And you could really tell that this is not a scripted scene. They really having problems. And... Bambi talking about how her grandparent died and he left and that was pretty bad and he was trying to defend it and I don't think they go get married to be honest. I really don't. 
Um, she tired of him always leaving. He said he'll leave because he don't want to argue. And then Bambi left. So I thought that was kind of backwards. But you could tell she was really hurt about it. So whatever with that. Then we go to the glam shop. A scene. Um, Lovely Mimi is there with... Um, Lovely Mimi is there with Tommy. And they started talking about... Well, Mimi started talking about Sierra and how she don't like... Actually, I forgot to mention a long time ago that Mimi told Tommy about the glam shop and how she don't like the owner and this, that, and the other. So then, uh, Mimi is at the glam shop, and this time she brought Tommy with her. She's doing somebody nails, and Tommy and her are talking, and they're really, really loud. But in the the um, the owner, Sierra, comes over, and she's like, why, why are y'all so loud, this, that, and the other? Um, before she comes over, the conversation that they was having was Mimi asked um, Tommy how she liked Treasure P and Mariah. And Tommy says she don't like them at all. And then she asked, Tommy asked Mimi how she liked Dom. And she said she do. And um, Mimi said that she think that Tommy and dime are kind of lesbian and might like each other and she was saying a whole bunch of inappropriate stuff and that's when the owner walked over and said can y'all lower your voice blah 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 this down which i gotta admit i actually was on her side the owner's side because they could have been a little bit quieter then again i always heard that beauty shops and barber shops and hair places it's all about gossip you hear people's conversations and stuff that's what people like get from the barber shop or the beauty shop or the hair salon whatever but anyway she told asked them to lower their voices tommy was being real defense was like well ain't nobody talking or what if maybe if they was talking you would hear you wouldn't hear us and this that and the other and she's like no 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 i just need you guys to lower your voices i'm not saying be quiet just lower your voices you're being very inappropriate uh mimi invites um the owner to have drinks with her and Moriah. Tommy said, oh, and Mimi actually did say that too. She said, this is the beauty shop. You're supposed to get gossip. That's what's supposed to happen. Um, Sierra actually accepts Mimi's offer to go have drinks. That was stupid. Y'all don't like each other. Then, this show ends with all new people, which I don't, I don't like new people. I would rather see the old people. It, or the original people, shall I say. Mimi, Sierra, and Moriah having an outing. As soon as it happened, and this is another one, how I don't like Moriah and Sierra's relationship because Sierra was acting like she was Moriah's mama. She was like, shut up, or not shut up, but be quiet. You do not be that loud and behave like that. You know that. And lovely Mimi's like, huh? She said, and uh, Sierra's like, you don't be with this circus clown. And lovely Mimi's like, huh, circus clown? Did she just call me that? And then she's like, yes, and about my shop, do not do that again, or this, that, and the other. And Mimi was like, all right, well, I'll let you talk, and now it's my turn. I quit the glam shop. I don't work there no more. And she's like, oh, and the owner's like, yeah, okay, thank you. Your service wasn't needed, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. And she says, yeah, and she says, you want to be black so bad. And Mimi said, I don't got to be black to, to kick your ass. And she was like, all right, well. And then they stood up. It was a confrontation, blah, blah, blah. And Sierra was all, or Moriah was all mad. She's like, oh, why can't they get along? And this is why I do not like Sierra. Why is she pulling Moriah with her? She's like, no, we're leaving. We're leaving. She want Moriah to be on her side so bad. Let Moriah show her true colors. Is she a real friend to you? Or is she's really a ride or die with you? If y'all really been friends for this long, she would already leave with you. You shouldn't have to be holding her hand saying, come on, we're leaving. Let's go. No. Like, I, I didn't like that at all. But then, you know, it ends with um, lovely Mimi laughing and stuff. Like, she's going to be the next star of that they're trying to make on Love and Hip Hop. Um, I like her. Um, I like... Who else? Out of these new people, I like her. And I like... Moriah. I do not like Treasure P. I do not like Sierra. Um, but that's it for this episode. This was a uh, it was a good episode, but where was Jocelyn? Where was Rashida? Where was Kirk? 
where it was Mimi even, Arian, like, it was like the New People episode. Like, they only threw in Carly Red and they threw in Scrappy. That's pretty much it. Like, where was all the original people? Like, so, it was a good episode, but I just would prefer for there to be more of Jocelyn, more of, you know, Scrap or Stevie or Mimi. Like, I wanted more OGs in this episode. But, I mean, I guess they got to keep people coming in and coming out. Because if Jocelyn and Stevie quit tomorrow, they have to have other characters. I understand that. But that's it for this episode, for this review. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share the video on all four social media. I know this review came late. But I'm going to try to start uploading them more quick, more quickly. But until next time, catch you later.